I've had Sprouts Farmer's Market on my list to take a look at for quite some time, and it looks like I might be a little late on this one because they've been as low as $32 in the last 52 weeks, which is lower than the margin of safety that I'm looking for on this stock. Currently sitting at 65, so they've more than doubled in the last 52 weeks. I'm coming up with fair value around 46 and three quarters, and discounted cash flow is 47 and three quarters. So clearly, that 47 range would be a reasonable value for the stock based on its current fundamentals. Earnings yield looks pretty good. We'd be looking for them to come in with a earnings per share of $3.28. For the current valuation and what we're looking at is 292 this year 313 the following year so not quite there that's more like three years out so clearly it's a bit elevated at the moment cash flow yield is pretty low 3.5 percent usually around 3.8 looks like cash flows aren't really their strong suit here but kind of goes in line with the valuation of the whole company it's nothing super spectacular here cash flows are lacking a little bit but that's the industry that they're in roe 22.5 it's being diluted by that high debt to equity ratio it's like their debt is pretty high and we'd like to see that come down but again that's kind of how it is in the industry that they're in so if we don't like that then we need to avoid that industry roi is just shy of eight and a half percent which is pretty good an ROA, uh, seven and three quarters percent. Gross margin, we're looking at last year, uh, 36.88, typically around 36.66. So right in line with their average net came in a little low, 3.8% compared to the 3.9 that we use. They've had some slow growth, 3.88%, 2.21, but analysts are expecting it to pick up 6.9, 7.76. So Let's start out with 7.5 for our growth rate. For They've been buying back quite a bit of their shares, almost 5%, 3%. So if we do three and a half, in fact, let, let's knock that down to three as well. Keep it in line with what we've seen. Although the price is significantly higher, we'll change that for more of a worst case scenario to one and a half. Cash flows have not been growing it. It's been shrinking. They came in a little low this last year. It could have just been a down year. Oh, we can take a quick look at that and see. 20, 2020 was high. 2023 was in line with 2022. So they're in a bit of a divot debt right here. And we'd be looking for them to come back out and get back to their average cash flow yield. But... I don't think we're going to see anything spectacular here. If their revenue is growing at 7.5% and their cash flows are growing at 4.5%, we'd see the cash flow yield ending up at 3% over the course of five years. So that might even be a little low. 5.5 growth, 3.2. I still feel like that's a little low, but if they're on a, a trend of cash flow shrinking, then that might be reasonable though. Assets somewhere in the realm of four to five percent constantly, and liabilities three to four percent constantly. Uh, dividend they do not pay margins. I wouldn't expect a lot of growth here, not for the industry that they're in. So even one percent might be a bit high if we want to be conservative with this. I'd put them in between where they currently sit and what they are on average. So maybe 0 0.75. 0 0.75 is a bit more realistic here. So if you buy at today's price. I don't think you're going to see much return over the course of the next three years unless they outperform this thesis here. Uh, you'd be sitting on the fair value at that point would be about $57. And then in five years, uh, I'd get up to a fair value around $70. So you'd be sitting on small gains there. Nothing crazy. 6%. You're underperforming the market by 41% over that time frame. But you are seeing average returns of double digits. So what if you were to buy this at the fair value, that's really what we're looking for is outperformance in the five year. In the three year would be even better. You're underperforming by about 5% there. And if you could get in at the 52 week low that we've seen, I mean, that's the ideal scenario there. You're 
3x the market return in the next three years and a little bit more than double in the next five years. So that would be an amazing scenario there. You are already doubled on your position with where the stock currently trades. But now let's see if we can come up with a best case scenario here. A best case scenario is still within reason. Let's say analysts are a little low. I feel like typically they do, at least on earnings, come in a little low. So let's say 8% for the revenue share count. I, I don't think that they're going to do more than 3%. In fact, at the current share price, I don't think that they're even going to do 3%. So we'll hold it there. Cash flows, let's say that they can get back up to their average yield. Uh, so 9.5% growth would get them about there. Assets, 6%, slightly outperforming what we've seen. Liabilities, uh, we'd want this to grow on the lower end, so 3.5% there. And then margin growth, 1%. Again, it's a tough very low margin industry that they're in. So even this best case scenario, decent gains, 13% average returns, still underperforming in the three year and the five year based off today's price, but in line with the markets in the three year. So that's what we really like. Let's come up with a worst case scenario. Let's assume that they don't come in at this high revenue growth that analysts are projecting. In the last two years, compound annual growth rate's been 2.21%. So we're going to go 2.5% and see what that's going to give us. Share count, like I said, I think if they're going to hold at these, if ch shares are going to be at this price, then they're not going to be buying back the same amount that we've seen historically. Cash flows, uh, we can go with 2% here. Kind of continue a small downtrend in those cash flows. Assets, 4.5% on the lower end of what we've seen. Liabilities, 4.5% there as well. That's on the higher end of what we've seen. And then margins, in their margins, but assuming that there is a small shrink in those, it still only takes them to 3.7% in five years. In that case, annual returns are 4.22%. Not, not good at all. Less than half of what you'd expect from market returns. And if we take a look and see, would even having a margin of safety in this case help you? And it would. And that's why we build in a margin of safety. Like those people who got in at $32, I think that they'll be just fine because even worst case scenario, you're looking at 48 and a half in the three year and 53, 52 and three quarters in the five year. Nearly doubling the market returns in the next three and in the next five, uh, outperforming as well, about 17%. And that's all just based on a nice cushion of fair value there to start out with. You're only getting 4.2% per year in growth, but you've got such an undervalued starting point that you're going to have uh, decent returns as long as the market recognizes the actual value here. Then if we go to prices, things don't look too bad here. I mean, balance sheet had some nice linear growth, looks to be leveling off now. Still on an upward trajectory, but not at the same rate that it was. Fair value is very linear, constantly growing. Uh, cash flows, pretty flat, honestly. And then the earnings are on the similar trend to, as, on a similar trend to what we've seen from everything else. So I do think that first case that we came up with is the most reasonable scenario and it might be at a high price at the moment, but I think that if you wait and you can get into it at a lower price, preferably in like the forties, uh, then that would be the ideal scenario. 
So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and enjoy the video. Comment what other stocks we should take a look at and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.